Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another video. Several weeks ago, I made a video detailing Andrew Hammond's unlikely journey to the NHL's history books thanks to his record-breaking performance back in 2015. Now in the midst of researching that video, I began looking at other one-season wonders throughout NHL history and examined just how surprising their career years were compared to their usual play in the show. However, the more I looked, the more I asked myself, who is the biggest one-season wonder in the history of the National Hockey League? Well, after several weeks of looking, I think I might have found him. This is the story of Scott Bukestad, the greatest one-season wonder in NHL history. Born in St. Paul, Minnesota on June 2nd, 1961, Barry Scott Bukestad would begin his hockey career at Irondale High School and register 80 points during his final year with the team before joining the University of Minnesota for the 1979-80 season. Having joined the Golden Gophers as an 18-year-old, the American forward would spend the next two years at the university and see a gradual improvement in his production from one year to the next, as he went from 4 points in 18 games during his rookie season to 25 points in 35 games as a sophomore. This improvement was deemed so impressive that it would earn Bukestad a selection at the NHL entry draft, as he was taken 181st overall by the Minnesota North Stars in the 1981 event. He wasn't a top prospect or anything, but that's still an impressive feat, right? Once he had been drafted by an NHL organization, Bukestad would remain at university for two more years and take his game to the next level, as he would cement his place as one of the best collegiate players across the entire country. After all, the ninth round draft pick would register 43 points in 36 games during the 81-82 season before notching an astonishing 43 goals and 91 points in just 44 games during the 82-83 season. Not only would he double his point production compared to the year prior and score nearly a goal a game for the entire season, the alternate captain would also earn a place on the WCHA's 1983 first All-Star team and be named a finalist for the 1983 Hobie Baker Award. So he had a pretty good year for himself, you know. Having graduated university and having potted 163 points in just 133 games during that span, Bukestad would join the United States national team for the 83-84 season, where the forward would pick up right where he left off in college and continue to score at a very high level, as he potted 31 goals and 51 points in 54 games with the team. During this time, Bukestad would also represent America at the 1984 Winter Olympic Games, where the 22-year-old scored four points in six games as the US finished seventh place at the competition. Once the Olympics had concluded and the Americans were eliminated, Bukestad would return to North America and finally turn pro, as he joined the Minnesota North Stars for the rest of the 83-84 season. From there, Bukestad would make his NHL debut on February 20th, 1984, before splitting the rest of the year between the North Stars and the CHL Salt Lake Golden Eagles, where he went scoreless in five NHL games and potted 18 points in 14 CHL games for his efforts. So thanks to a dominant performance in college and a productive season internationally, Bukestad had joined the North Stars less than three years after they had drafted him, and he had played his first stint in the best league in the world. Though he would take some time to get comfortable at the NHL level, Bukestad would soon find his footing, and then some. The 84-85 season saw Bukestad earn a permanent spot on the North Stars roster after scoring five points in five AHL games to start the year he would spend the rest of the season with Minnesota, and he would embark on his rookie year in the NHL, Bukestad would register modest scoring numbers for the team, as he finished the year with 11 goals and 15 points in 72 games. Not exactly Calder winning stats there, but a respectable performance nonetheless. So during his first 77 games of NHL hockey, Scott Bukestad had scored roughly a dozen points for his efforts. Not the numbers someone should expect from a prolific goal scorer at every other level, but the guy had potted almost a dozen goals during his rookie season. There's plenty of players in the show that would kill to score that many goals, you know? Though he was expected to register similar numbers during the following year of play, Bukestad was about to produce the greatest performance of his entire NHL career. The 1985-86 season saw Bukestad earn a place on Minnesota's roster out of training camp and begin the year with the North Stars for the very first time. 
Despite his minimal scoring numbers the year prior, the former ninth round pick would produce a much stronger start the second time around, as he potted four goals and five points in his first ten games of the year. Though he would return to his former modesty during November of 1985 by notching five points in 14 games that month, Bukestad would soon break out in a very big way. As December 1985 began, Bukestad would transform from a productive depth player to a high-scoring superstar almost overnight, as he registered an incredible 14 goals and 20 points in just 12 regular season games that month. During that span, Bukestad would register five multi-goal games, two hat-tricks, and four contests with at least three points or more. So after notching 10 points in his first 24 games of the year, Bukestad had scored over a goal a game for an entire month of play, and he had finished the calendar year with 30 points in his first 36 games that season. Talk about a hot streak, eh, folks? Now if you thought his breakout stopped there, oh boy would you be mistaken. After registering a 5 game point streak to start the new year, and after finishing January 1986 with 15 points in 15 games, Bukestad would continue his high scoring play into February too, as he potted 11 points in 12 games over the next 28 days. From there, the American forward would score at over a point a game during March of 1986 by potting 18 points in 14 games, including a hat-trick and two three-point contests, before rounding out the year with two points in three games during early April. Once the final buzzer sounded and the 85-86 NHL season concluded, Scott Bukestad had produced one hell of a sophomore year. In 80 regular season games, Bukestad scored an incredible 43 goals and 76 points, including 14 power play goals, 2 shorthanded goals, and 7 game winning goals. Not only that, Bukestad's numbers would also help him finish 2nd in goals and 4th in points on the North Stars roster, which was a pretty impressive feat for one of the younger guys on the team. So after being taken in the ninth round of the NHL draft half a decade prior, and after potting 15 points during his rookie season in the show, Scott Bukestad had scored at nearly a point a game pace over an entire season of play, and he had notched roughly a goal every two games during his sophomore year in the league. Now that's how you earn a roster spot, folks. So what happened to Bukestad after his breakout year? Would he produce similar scoring numbers in the years that followed? Would he somehow take his game to even greater heights for the rest of his career? No. No, he wouldn't. The 86-87 season saw Bukestad return to Minnesota's roster once more and look to build on his impressive year prior. Though he started the year strong by potting 9 points in his first 10 games, the forward would hit one hell of a cold streak. After notching a lone assist against the Chicago Blackhawks on November 1st, 1986, Bukestad would fail to register a single point in each of his next 15 games, as he went the rest of November and most of December without getting on the score sheet once. Though he would finally snap this scoring drought against the Quebec Nordiques on December 20th, the forward would go scoreless during his following game against the Leafs, his final contest of that calendar year. When you consider that he had also gone scoreless in three consecutive contests before the Chicago game on November 1st, Nick Bukestad had potted two points in his last 21 games. The guy had scored nine points in his first ten games of the year before notching only a pair of points in nearly two months of play. Cold streak, Bukestad was frozen solid. As you might expect, this unproductive play prompted Minnesota to demote Bukestad to the minors in late January 1987. But after scoring 10 points in 11 games with the AHL Springfield Indians, the forward was recalled to the North Stars for the rest of the year. Unfortunately though, this minor league resurgence wouldn't translate to major league success, as Bukestad would score a single point in his final 8 games of the season following his call up from the AHL. Once the 86-87 season had concluded, Bukestad had produced quite the disappointing year, as he finished the season with an abysmal 4 goals and 13 points in 39 regular season games. So after scoring 43 goals during his sophomore year prior, and after registering nearly a point a game over the entire season, Scott Bukestad had notched a dozen points during his third NHL season, and he had failed to register a single point for nearly two months of play. The guy scored only four points over the final five months of the season. If that's not one of the biggest regressions in NHL history, I don't know what is. 
While Bukestad and the North Stars hoped that this performance was an outlier, the forward would be unable to recapture his former magic for the rest of his NHL career. The next few years of Bukestad's career would see the forward fail to return to his former glory, as he would be unable to replicate his career-high numbers from his sophomore year in the league. Following his fifth season with Minnesota, Bukestad would join the Pittsburgh Penguins for the 88-89 NHL season, and while he would get a fresh start in a new city, the forward would fail to get his career back on track. In fact, Bukestad played so poorly that he produced the worst season of his entire NHL career, as he scored just three goals in 24 games with the team. Oh, and he also spent a handful of games in the minors with the IHL's Kalamazoo Wings, so his career was clearly on a downward trend now. Oh, but we're not done there, folks. After his forgettable year in Pittsburgh, Bukestad would join the Los Angeles Kings for the 89-90 season. From there, the former ninth round pick would spend three years within the Kings organization, but his continued lack of offensive production meant that he bounced between the majors and the minors more frequently than ever before. After all, Bukestad would suit up in just 64 NHL games during his three seasons with the Kings, he would play 30 games in the show just once during that span, and he only registered 15 points in the process. A far cry from his 40 goal season only half a decade prior. Having finished the 91-92 season with the IHL's Phoenix Roadrunners, and having potted 28 points in 28 games with the team, Bukestad would rejoin the Roadrunners for the 92-93 season. However, after scoring 9 points in 7 games with the team, the forward would retire from the sport at the age of 31. So after a decade-long career as a professional hockey player, Scott Bukestad had called it a day, having registered 76 goals and 144 points in 317 NHL games. Now while these totals are nothing to scoff at, especially for a ninth round draft pick, considering that Bukestad scored nearly 60% of his goals and nearly half of his points during a single season of play, the rest of his career really paled in comparison to his breakout performance. I mean, the guy managed only 53 points in 160 NHL games in the six years after his breakout season. He scored nearly twice as many goals and exactly 20 more points during the 85-86 season alone. When you put these numbers into perspective, Scott Bukestad really is the king of one season wonders, isn't he? Having hung up his skates for the final time, Scott Bukestad would remain in the hockey world and use his talents to help the next generation, as he created the Scott Bukestad Shooting School to help young hockey players improve their shooting and scoring abilities. Now while it's somewhat humorous that a guy who had one 20 goal season in the NHL chose to open a professional shooting school, Bukestad did score 170 goals over the course of his 9 year pro career, so you can't say that he wasn't qualified, you know? Though his decision to start a shooting school is certainly an interesting one, there's no denying that it's become a resounding success since its inception in 1994. Over the last 28 years, Bukestad claims to have helped 10,000 young players with individual shooting lessons, 15,000 players with his shooting and scoring schools, while also claiming to have worked with over 500 NHL and Division I hockey players too. Oh, and he has also served as a shooting instructor for the Minnesota Wilds rookie camp too, so things have gone pretty well for him post-retirement. While Bukestad would coach two different high school teams in Minnesota over the last few decades, and he would earn several accolades during his four seasons behind the bench, his shooting school continues to thrive to this very day, as it is set to celebrate its 30th birthday in 2024. Say what you want about his NHL career, but Bukestad has done pretty well for himself in the three decades that have followed. Though he would never replicate his breakout season, and the rest of his career would pale in comparison, Scott Bukestad's performance during the 85-86 season made him the biggest one-season wonder the National Hockey League has ever seen. Sure, the rest of his tenure was modest at best, and he scored half of his career points during a single year of play, but the guy produced an incredible stint at college, he spent parts of eight seasons in the best league in the world, and he created a shooting school that is still going strong nearly three decades later. He certainly could have done a lot worse for himself, you know. He may be remembered as a one-season wonder, but his decade-long career as a pro hockey player and his numerous achievements across the sport prove that he was anything but.
And on that note, I'm going to end today's video. That was the story of the greatest one season wonder in NHL history. What do you guys think about Scott Bukestad's breakout season or the rest of his NHL career? Do you think that he made the most of the hand that he was dealt, or could he have kept up these numbers had things turned out differently? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye! A big thank you to Bexy93, Burned Retinas, Clayton Hallam, Drew Fawcett, Houston NG, Raquel and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.